Hi everybody, it's time for another Friday favorite on account of it's Friday and on account of alliteration. A game you've probably never heard of. This is Fallen Enchantress Legendary Heroes or Elemental Legendary Heroes. And I discovered this game after having my wisdom teeth out. It's a strategy game. And while in crippling wisdom tooth pain, I played this game for like 40 hours. It was... Yeah, it was something else. Oh, we have idle cities that could be doing something this turn. So it's like... Civilization meets... I don't want to say Final Fantasy Tactics. It's like Civilization meets uh, King's Bounty or Heroes of Might and Magic. So you build things in your cities in a sort of Civ style. There are research trees for civilization and warfare and magic. You cast spells and you build armies and that gain levels and etc. etc. And the battles, we'll I'll see if we can hop into one in a second. Where's Sir Codron? Yeah. And the battles are sort of a turn based. I completely outclass these guys. <laughs> they're, they're a turn based grid battle, uh, like Heroes of Might and Magic. Bam! Sir Codron is a brutal knight that I trained up from, like, birth. Um, wizards, go! Other wizards, go! Victory! Look at that. And as your heroes gain levels, they gain abilities. I mean, as I said, I'm a sucker for anything that has a talent tree. So, we're gonna get withstand, because we want to increase my army's spell resistance, and my bards. We're gonna bump the army's initiative. All right. So there are a number of other factions. Uh, there's usually a fog of war, but I have a spell that's taking care of that. In addition to other factions, you fight the world itself. In Civ, you have barbarians. But in here, you have monsters. So we've got ogres and demons. And there are wild lands. There's one down here. So if you can clear everything out of the wild land and sometimes be the boss, so the huge, giant, terrifying fireman then you can seize it as territory. I mean, because ultimately it's a territory game. Like Civ, there's more than one way to win. So in Fallen Enchantress, there are four different ways to win. There's the diplomatic victory, where you, you form an alliance with everybody. There's obviously the conquest victory, where you kill everyone else and, see, and take control of the whole world. Uh, there's also a magic victory, which is a lot like the um, like the tech victory in Civ, but instead of building a spaceship, you build a bunch of mystical icons, and then use those to cast the master spell, which gives you control over reality. Uh, but there's also a quest victory. Because your heroes can go on quests, and so there's a master quest that will take you all around the world, and you'll face down with this dragon lord, and eventually beat them. Ideally, um, they're super. It's, I've only done the master quest once. It's super hard. Let's do a quest. Assuming I can find my army. Where does Codric? Codron go. Codron is my... Codron's the man, basically. So we'll shop in my cities. And yeah, you can equip them with armor. 
you do quests and get weapons. It's it's a whole thing. Like it's just it's basically crack. It's just so good. So we'll buy a quest map. There are a lot of different factions. One of the interesting things about that I that I love about Fallen Enchantress is Oh, we have a deadly inn. Nice. I will talk to the bard. Oh, this is going to go poorly. Dragons. Spoilers. Dragons are hard. Uh, yes, play the song. Now let's go fight a dragon. All right, now let's go die to a dragon. Yup. Um. So all my guys are now protected from fire, which is good because they're gonna need it. Um. I really wish you could change the angle on this, but it's always three quarters like this, so you can't really see the dragon. But this is not turning out to be the massacre I expected it to be. It turns out that all of this army building has actually uh, come to some fruition. Uh, 96 mana, or damage, eh? Yeah, let's... Uh... Let's try that. Yeah, I'm pretty far along in this game. Uh, I'm, as, I'm most of the way into, the, in, into the, at the end of the tech tree. It's like every other strategy game. It's, it's a really slow sort of start. But once you get into it, you can ramp up pretty quickly. Kill the dragon without losing anybody! Yeah, get some woot hands there. We'll level up Sir Codron. I forget what we're giving him. Is it more spell damage? No, we're just gonna... Yeah, so Codron's a wizard despite being a knight because reasons. And because when you can spec out your own people, I mean, it gets, it gets pretty cool. But one of, the, one of the huge cool things about Fallen Enchantress is there are all kinds of factions but, and every faction has a ruler. Mine is Yelena. She's also a wizard. But you can design your own factions. And you can design your own ruler. Um, not just the, their abilities, but what they look like, what their actual graphic is. And even cooler than that, let's go to this town. With units, you can design your own units. So, you can, like, you can customize everything, which gets you exactly the game that you want, and the sort of builds and factions that you want. Now, of course, the flip side of this, as with everything else, the more customization you have, the more versatility you have, the more min-maxing you can do, which I love, uh, it means that it's really easy to trivialize the game about halfway through, because... You know your faction, your abilities, but they're diverse enough that there's a lot of different ways to have fun. Um, everything from empires who... Oh, I should go kill this dragon. Now that I know I can kill a dragon without, like, dying, I should go kill that dragon. Uh, where's Codron? Alright, folks. Let's go kill another dragon. Let's see if I can upgrade my guys at all. Yeah, let's see that. Because I've been leaving it alone very, very carefully until I thought I could kill it. There it is. Uh, let's use a spell. So there's tons of spells. There's city enchantments and buffs. 
the one that I the one that I'm a big fan of is Cloud Walk. So we're gonna let's teleport anywhere in your territory. Super useful. But the amount of customization that this gives you is just bonkers. And you can do so much with it. Let's see if we can heal my team. I don't think that I can. Oh, there we are. Let's try that again. I just really don't want to like lose to this dragon on account of um, that would be deeply unfortunate so everybody's healed and we're going to stack the deck we're going to use an arcane monolith which makes that my territory and we're going to freeze them yeah. <laughs> the, the amount of crap you can do once you get a, a, a good way through the game once you know what you're doing is considerable. And now we will fight them. So we'll see which of my guys successfully resists fear. Make, all, make everyone protected from fire, which is unfortunate because that's a dragon that uses lightning. Defend my crew from those air elementals. I have a bunch of backup healers. Spells, let's go with Fireball. There we go. Now the downside is, everyone's terrified, so they can't fight. Uh, everyone. Including all my main damage dealers. Don't mind us, we're just, oh god. Thank thankfully, <laughs> that tank has a lot of hit points. Yeah, it's one of those games that takes you to sort of master the world and master particularly a magic civilization, which is real fun. It's real good. And there's all kinds of charms and it's and, and replayability. Nice dragon down. Look at this. Pendulum axe. Sweet. We level up again. And now, actually, once I've once I've completed the tech tree, I'll be able to build um, something here and recruit dragons, which is awesome. So, as with everything else, you start with a sovereign in one town and you sort of build your empire out. This I did entirely through col colonization and not conquest. Uh, I've started to move away from conquest victories just because they're sort of boring. And just aggressive, instead I just aggressively colonize. To build a wide empire. But as far as empire building games go, Fallen Enchantress is definitely my favorite. 